Hello everyone and welcome back to the Unreal Engine C++ training series which goes up on YouTube every Monday and Friday for your convenience. Now, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Normally we're going to be doing a lot of coding, but today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking into the Unreal Engine API reference. Now, the reason we're going to, in doing this tutorial today is I've had people ask me before, they say, Pharaoh, there are tons of you, there are tons of tutorials on YouTube, there are tons of tutorials on people's blogs, but sometimes it's just not enough. Sometimes I need to be able to look into the documentation, but the documentation isn't helping or I can't find what I need. And that's where this tutorial is going to come in. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at two main portions of the API reference because most of the stuff that we're going to be doing as far as just regular gameplay code is going to be in these two in in these two areas. The first is going to be the core. So this is the core engine programming environment. It includes math library, standard container classes and support functionality. All right. Another place that we're going to do look into is the engine. And this is the core of, or this is, you can see where actors and components are defined and implements the game framework. So this is where a lot of the stuff that we'll be going into um, when we're just doing regular game programming. As you can see, there's tons of other stuff. So we've got app framework, we've got AI module. This is all alphabeticalized, so that's easy. Foliage gameplay tags, which are an important thing in, in larger products. HTTP, head mounted displays for like VR units, uh, JSON utilities, all kinds of different stuff. Well, we're just going to be focusing on the core and the engine today because that's where most of the stuff that we are actually using come from. So here we've got async, we've got containers. If we look into containers, we can see, ooh, we actually don't see a whole lot here, but we've got different type depths. We've got T pair. We've got our different enums, we've got functions. Now, see, this is exactly what I was talking about. When I look into containers, I expect to see a list of all of the containers that we use, like uh, T array is a container, and we've got 35 hits on the letters T and array next to each other. Oh, so we've got T array. And here, We've got T-Array just like what we've looked at before. If you're unfamiliar with T-Arrays, um, there's going to be a tutorial at the top right of the top right corner of the screen. You can go click on and look at and come right back to us. But in that tutorial, we used uh, different functions. So we used a reserve function and we also used an operator um, known as the, the array index operator. And we'll be able to see all of that good stuff here um, in the documentation. So variables, we've got array num and array max. Those are pretty self-explanatory. We've got different constructors. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight constructors. Wait, is that right? Can I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight constructors? Yep. They're different move constructors, copy constructors, and an initialize list constructor. All basic stuff if you're familiar with the uh, STL in regular C++. And here we've got tons and tons of our member functions. I don't know how many of the functions this is and I'm not counting because it's a lot of functions. And here you can see this is where the reserve function is that we used last time or in the TRA tutorial rather. So it takes in a parameter of int 32 number and it reserves memory such that the array can contain at least these number elements. And basically what this does is it helps us to go ahead and allocate a bunch of memory ahead of time so that we don't have to reallocate every time we add something which can be potentially expensive. And you know it tells us uh, its parameters and it's also got a nice little helpful C also where we can go to shrink and it shrinks the array's memory use to the smallest possible to store the elements currently in it. So if we've got an array that can hold 50 items and we only have 35, 
then we might as well shrink our, our array if, it's, if we're not counting on it getting much bigger so that we can save on space and allow for other uh, objects to be held inside of that memory block. All right, so when we look into the engine, we can see that there's tons of different stuff. So we can say uh, there should be a T pair, maybe T pair initializer and T pair. Yep, our type def that we have right here. And it's just a type def for a tuple with a key type and a value type. But if we look into T tuple, we can see that there isn't a whole lot there. And if you're familiar with regular C++, you know, non, non Unreal Engine C++, you'll know that a tuple we can use to go ahead and return, oftentimes, more than one value from a function, which you can't do uh, just normally. You'd have to use a tuple or maybe a struct or some other object that can hold multiple data types. And you'd also know, if, you, if you're familiar with tuple, that there should be a make tuple function somewhere in here. Like if we were to look at the tuple documentation in, Unreal, er, in regular C++, so tuple C++, and we click on standard tuple, we can see that there's a make tuple function there. And that's not necessarily the case here. We don't know where that is. So we say that ttuple inherits from ttuple impl. So is it in here? Nope, it's not in here. So where could there be a make tuple function? Now, I thought about this question for a while, and after much searching, I actually found out that it's right here in templates. So if we go back, we can see that ttuple is in templates, but so is make tuple. And I can prove that by coming in and make tuple. If I can type make tuple right there and it makes a t-tuple from some arguments. Now, like we said before, when we look at the Unreal Engine API reference, the API reference is an early progress and some information may be missing or out of date. I'm not sure if the information is necessarily missing in this case, it's just not exactly in the place where we would expect to find it. So that's, that's an issue that we run into when we look straight at the documentation is that oftentimes, Things aren't where we want them to be, or where we'd expect them to be, which can be an issue. For example, when I was doing research for my for the T array tutorial, I was looking in T array for some sort of function that would help me find the maximum value of an array. I didn't, so what we did was we ended up um, making a function that did that for us. And it wasn't until after that tutorial that I realized that there was actually something that could have helped us out a lot. And that was in the engine side. So like before, we, we came into the API reference and we looked at engine. Oh, well, there's lots of instances of the word engine here. But engine right here. We open this up and we come to all of this we've got AI animation atmosphere camera all this kind of stuff but what's really interesting we've got game framework and we've got kismet so game framework has all of you can see actor you can see character controller default pawn these are all all of the different classes that we use for almost every single thing that we do in the game so a actor that's got everything in it right and a character is an a actor that inherits pawn and it's got other stuff inside of it. So basically everything that we need as far as where our classes are, are in this game framework, which is really nice. But the function that would have really helped me out was inside of Kismet. But more specifically, the Kismet math library. Now, some really some awesome other uh, stuff that we can look at are the gameplay statics in the Kismet system library. These guys also have awesome, awesome stuff. I think we use the, use the Kismet system library to create a debug line. So draw debug line. 
Yep, so draw debug line is in the Kismet system library, which we used in the ray casting tutorial, which you can take a look at at the top right here. But all of the information that we need is right here. Gameplay statics, it's the same thing. There's all kinds of different stuff, so apply damage. That's, a, that's already a function that's written in, and it applies to all actors that can have damage applied to them. So you don't have to create your own custom damage system within the engine. It's already right there for us. Now you can go in through here and look at all kinds of stuff. There's all kinds of stuff going on in here. But in our math, in our math library, this is what would have definitely helped us in uh, the TRA tutorial because there is a function here that says get max of a float array where I could have gotten the maximum value of the float array instead of writing that function to do it for us. So like I said before, if you know where you're looking then there's a nice way of going through the uh, documentation if it's in the documentation, but otherwise it can be a real hassle. But to simplify that, what we can do is we can say, as a whole, it is extremely helpful if we just take a look at the engine and the core. In the engine, as you can see, we have game, excuse me, game framework in Kismet, where that was you know a bunch of stuff that that helped us out in previous tutorials. There's Slate, which you can use for uh, for user interfaces, components, which we use all the time. So we've got box components, we've got sphere components, all different kinds of stuff. Input components, which we use for every input that we have in our game. And the core, which has our math, has our containers, has different templates, has U object, which is perfect for the reflection system in Unreal Engine. So if we focus on the engine and the core, then most of what we're looking for is there. Now, if, the, if it's not there, then there are some other places that I could recommend going to. These places would be the forums and the answer hub and the Reddit community over with Unreal Engine. So it's reddit.com or slash Unreal Engine. Great place to ask questions. And I think that'll wrap up today's tutorial. Not a whole lot of coding. Actually, no, there wasn't, there wasn't much coding at all. I didn't even, no, I didn't even open this. Whatever. But hopefully this gives you a good idea of where to look for certain things if you can't find it any, anywhere else. But like I said before, this is usually the first place that I go to, is I go to the Unreal Engine API and come into the regular API reference. And then from there, I look inside of core and then I look inside of engine. And then after that, it's everything else in here. But usually, hopefully most of what you'll find for gameplay coding anyway, will be found within either core or the engine. And that concludes today's tutorial. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can go ahead and uh, let me know in the comment section down below, or you can tweet at me at notfromegypt. And that's kind of funny stuff. That's not relevant to what we're, gonna, to what we're doing. Um, shout out to Kind of Funny though. They're really cool people. And boom. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you on Monday.